Hi Virgo, welcome to your end of April 2023 general tarot update. It's Rena here. Just shuffling the cards. Okay, let me cut the deck and just pick one more card because twos can be a card. Oh, well, I spoke too soon because I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want the five of swords either. I probably should quit while I was ahead. I just don't like twos because they kind of leave things up in the air. So, but I'm, I'm not crazy about the five of swords either to end a reading. The heart of the matter is the king of swords. I can see this uh, in different ways. First of all, when I look at the past position, we have the justice card, which is connected to Libra. And Libra is one of the swords being an air sign. The other swords are Aquarius and Gemini. So if you are in a relationship with such a person or were in a relationship um, this could be showing up for you right now because sometimes a just, the justice card can be like a legal decision, like getting divorced, for instance. But the King of Swords, it's like you're do if this is you, you're doing everything you can to stay detached, as detached as possible, so that you're not feeling things so deeply. And perhaps if there's something, you know, very um, emotionally wrenching that you're not going to uh, necessarily allow yourself indulge in those emotions. But sometimes I feel like the King of Swords can point to like, you know, like uh, Kings can be fathers. And so you may draw the parallel between your relationship with your father and a relationship that has just ended and either uh, maybe saying to yourself, wow, this is why I wanted this person's approval because I never got it from my own father. I never felt that sense of affection or this, he wasn't in my life and he was just kind of like this remote character or, or, and, and also like a boss um, who never gives approval and we realize that we have to do that for ourselves, that we can't curry favor from other people. The justice card can also be like balance where, um, you know, the person isn't just putting themselves out there without expecting something in return. The higher message is the, the nine of cups, which is the wish fulfillment card. So it's almost like someone, um, it's unlocking the key to having what you want in life, but you have to be able to um, sometimes detach. Um, I think too, with the King of Swords, I've heard the term rather than calling it detachment, calling it neutrality. And I really like that because I think that um, especially nowadays, there's like a lot of encouragement to be outraged about something or to be really upset, like to really manipulate us with emotions. And sometimes that what happens is it leads us down the wrong road. So the King of Swords can be about mastering your, your thoughts and knowing when you cannot get caught up in emotion. It's not about being an automaton or uh, you know, a zombie or anything like that. It's about really knowing when um, to kind of maintain that neutrality. And this can also be like if you have, um, 
separated, divorced from someone, and you're, you know, tempted to kind of like sink into those emotions, realize with the nine of cups, it's like, you know, sometimes we have to go through those difficult times in order to get to the other side where there is emotional satisfaction, because even if somebody doesn't break up with their partner, if they're not the one to do it, um, if they were to be honest with themselves, I guarantee that 99 times out of a hundred, they're going to admit that they were not happy in that relationship. Now they may not have wanted to take it to that extreme of like leaving that person, but it's like the other person did them a favor. They just don't realize it yet. What crosses you is the ace of pentacles. This is um, a sense of maybe like waiting for the, the new job that hasn't come yet. So in other words, like for instance, or a new relationship, that's a stable relationship. If this is about, if you identify with the King of Swords and the Justice card in terms of relationship, then perhaps, you know, you haven't found the one because you are pentacles, Virgo. This is the card that relates to earth signs. And maybe, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing personal readings, somebody can be, I'm just giving a, a hypothetical, like they could be a Virgo sun sign. They may have the moon and Sag and they might have, they might have uh, inner planets in Leo and they could be very like Venus or Mars and they could be attracted to people like that. And yet when it comes to the actual uh, relationship as a whole, that might not be the right person for them. And yet uh, because there's like this uh, little bit of difference between, you know, like a contradiction in some of their placements, they just don't understand that. And they, they just go, you know, into one relationship after the other that is not really compatible. And I realize you fall in love with certain people and it's hot. You can't really control that in advance, but I still think that the person that you happen to be attracted to could be the kind of person that is not really overall compatible with you. It's kind of funny. I've thought about starting a matchmaking service based on astrological charts. And uh, sometimes I still think that would be really cool, like an online dating service. Um, what's coming in is the four of wands. And this is funny because this is actually a card of marriage and maybe like a new home or a happy home. When I think about divorce, for instance, I think about um, the freedom that comes when you are in a, in a, uh, environment, you know, your home is your nest, it's your refuge from the world. And when you're in an environment where you're living under the same roof with somebody and you're not happy, it's not good. So it can give you that sense of freedom again, uh, and freedom, meaning emotional freedom above all else. But, um, just in general, this may have something to do with, uh, home matters, something, some development with them. Maybe you are, uh, you found a home that really is suitable for you, or you're going to have an addition to your household that is making you happy. The outcome is the two of pentacles and um, this is a card that can be rather ambivalent in some way. Either the person isn't quite sure about something in their life, maybe they're deciding between two jobs, uh, or they are working two jobs and feeling very pulled in different directions. Um, in, an, in the, I think in the Rider Waite deck, in one of my decks, I know that there are, it's a juggler that is depicted in that card, which is perfect for that. And he's juggling the coins because um, sometimes people are juggling with two jobs 
and it is hectic and things like that. I did pick a, a couple of additional cards to clarify things. One is the Five of Swords. And um, this can be like uh, also in the workplace. So I always think of coworkers with that card, but also flying monkeys. If you are with a narcissist and there are people around them, whether it be their social network or family, you know, like friends that you might know as well, in-laws <laughs> that are not on your side, um, having to contend with that. Sometimes this indicates that someone is, you know, still, maybe you're still connected, still married, still haven't gone through, waiting for the justice. I mean, you've put it into motion, but it still isn't there yet. And you have to contend with um, slander or just gossip in the workplace. If you have been feeling like mistreated by your um, supervisor, manager, boss, and other workers are seem like they, they, they're being treated better. That could be what's going on. Because the justice card can be when you are feeling that things are not fair. It doesn't mean that you are receiving justice. So I don't like to end with the five of swords. I don't like to end with cards that I think of as rather challenging cards because I want to have a po positive reading. So that's why you know, sometimes you'll see me and I'll pick additional cards. It doesn't mean that uh, I think, oh my God, this is such a bad card. No, because with the five of swords, you can be aware of these things and that can be freeing too, because sometimes people assume that other people have their best interests at heart when actually they're um, stabbing them in the back. So obviously figuratively, and so I picked an additional card, the Fool card, zero point. This is the very first card of the tarot and the Major Arcana. I love the Fool card because it's all about this idea of, um, you know, creating something from scratch, completely from scratch. And this could include your your life, like completely reinventing yourself in some way, you know, there are so many possibilities of what this card could represent. But I feel that in a situation like this, if you are in the process of separating from someone, getting divorced, what have you in a personal relationship, you may feel like you don't even have an identity because of how you were, uh, acting in that relationship. And now it's like your opportunity to put yourself out there and be more of who you came here to be. For other people, if this is work-related, you may go into a completely different field. And it might be a field that is more uh, positive and supportive. There are some professions that naturally lend themselves to the kind of five of swords um, behavior. You know, I what what flashed in my mind was uh, the Black Swan, if anybody ever saw that movie uh, with Natalie Portman. And, you know, it was about ballet and, you know, this kind of um, dog eat dog environment. And those kinds of situations are obviously not pleasant and nobody wants to be, um, you know, uh, participating in that. But if somebody really wants to be successful in a certain field, and I, I would say like, um, the, the, I'm trying to think of something else. I mean, there's so many possibilities. Actually, any profession is a, a potential for there to be underhanded behavior. Let's face it. It takes a person who has integrity not to stoop to that, you know, bottom line. 
So anyway, um, that's what I have for you. Uh, this can be like, you know, an adventure for you if you embrace it that way, Virgo. I hope that, uh, oh, let me see. Where did the eclipse fall in your chart? It actually fell in your eighth house. If Aries is your eighth house, and it is. So actually, yeah, that's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's a powerful new moon in that solar eclipse. So yeah. So that's what I have for you, uh, Virgo. I hope that that resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.